hey guys we have this is the first time we've hosted clinify mun and this is the first event that has been happening at at this point uh, at this time in the morning so we on the stage we have the secretary general of the mun himself uh if you guys don't know what mun is or its full form then it's model united nations uh, secretary general will be telling you more about that uh and over to secretary general to tell some something about the mun to the people good morning one and all i am shitij your secretary general and and i would like to thank all the all the delegates and the chair people and the honorable chief guest who have, who have came come here to make this possible a lot of you might have seen me hop onto this server for the past few months so i for the past few weeks so i will keep it short um basically what an mun is it's an it's a social event which is a simulation of the model united nations and we provide an environment for people to solve problems in an efficient way while also helping you socialize with with your with your lot of your fellow fellow contemporaries here and this is basically like serves as a platform for you to stand in the footsteps of your political and and social leaders to to work and get get to meaningful conclusions and i would look forward to a happy debating yep that's it from my side thank you thank you shitaj so to everyone who is new here who hasn't been around in the server shitaj is the one who has arranged everything for the mun from the past one month he has been working really hard so kudos to him uh now we have let's move on to the chief guest that is nilay kulkarni uh, harish you would like to introduce nilay yeah sure uh, first of all uh, thanks a lot shitaj and viraj you guys have been you and your team has been working for quite a while on this uh, so thanks for arranging everything uh, moving on to nilay uh, fun fact uh, nilay and i went to the same school uh, you know back in 11th and 12th grade and he's one of the smartest people i've met uh, back in school i used to look up to him as to be like hey this is where i want to reach in the future and uh, you know uh, there are very few times when i term someone as an innovator you know a lot of people call themselves an innovator but uh, this guy truly is an innovator uh, when he was 13 i think he uh, sort of built out this uh, iot device which sort of uh was implemented during the kumbh mela kumbh mela is this huge gathering that happens in nasik and a bunch of other cities uh and this device sort of uh you know helped the police understand uh where you know things are crowded sleep and stampedes so at the age of 13 uh this guy just invented something that could actually save lives uh his also a prolific speaker has been at a lot of conferences he's spoken at ted new york city he has spoken at unleash 27 in 17 madrid uh, he has also spoken at moroccan social entrepreneurship summit and a bunch of others i don't want to list them it's a long list uh, he's a great speaker as well and uh, he's been you know playing around with a bunch of technologies um, i think right now he is playing around with blockchain and has been working on a re- working on bunch of really cool projects which i think he would be explaining during the talk and yeah looking forward to this talk uh, thanks a lot nilay for joining in i'm pretty sure you're going to inspire a bunch of students out there today and yeah uh, over to you thank you so much arish i did not know you looked up to me but fun fact thank you so much so uh, that was quite a generous introduction i have been playing around with technology um, for quite a while now and uh, today the purpose of the talk is uh, i just want to share with you guys what um, what problems i i observed or i found uh, interesting in the past and you know the journey to to from observing a problem to deriving a solution is a very interesting one and fortunately i've taken a few of these journeys and the next phase of this process is taking that solution and actually causing impact right uh be- because there are there are a bunch of github repositories that are supposed to um you know cure covid or something i mean not cure but you know solve everything around covid but actually achieving impact right taking it taking it, like you know you have you have you have built that uh you know you have you have derived some solution but but how do you actually get people to use it and how do you actually say that this led to something right so so that journey as well uh, i have attempted a few a couple of them have gone through a few 
did not i mean you know it is always a very fascinating journey so today i just want to share with you guys what i have uh, you know what worked for me what did not and 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 a few bunch of thoughts here and there so the first problem i want to talk about or the first innovation i want to talk about it's called tongo and i i worked on this between 2018 to 2019 um with a with a team based in israel uh, they um so so it is a it started as this um discussion between uh, me and the founder uh, matan his name is matan barkovits he's a really interesting guy he is a uh, tongo right it started as a discussion uh, between matan barkovits and i he's a he's a really cool technologist uh, like he is a musician turn technologist and uh, well we start we we started talking about like goofing around playing around with audio technology uh, we did not actually start from problem so from the problem and this was the first time i started from an engineering um, direction like i built something first and then we found an impact so a lot of times you might hear that um, you know you have to start with the why uh, you know simon sinek is a pretty big advocate of that but in my opinion that works sometimes but like there are other times it's not exclusive that you need to start with this why every time sometimes you can goof around build some cool technology and say that um, you know this this can lead to something really good so what happened with tongo was we invented this uh, thing that could fit into your mouth it was non invasive you it's like a mouth guard that you put uh, that boxers use uh, but it could analyze and like understand uh, capture signals uh, from the tongue right and then we we transmitted this to a uh, a phone through bluetooth and so we built a bunch of apps that let people play music or like a, like play guitar we embedded some phrases like i'm hungry i want to go home etc uh, in in the audio app then we built games like snake and tetris uh, so so we we started sort of building on top just just to see where we can take this technology and then uh, well we we then deployed this for people with uh, physical disabilities who could not use their limbs uh, so so that is that is where it's like where the impact angle actually came so we first solved something then we figured out a problem and like and and then we le- then it led to the impact so it's like a you know there there are types of livers right so this is like a one of one of, in one of them the fulcrum is at some side like one one of them it's in the middle so this is kind of one of those cases where we put the solution first uh we actually pushed the boundaries of this technology further and what we did was build uh, mac os and windows drivers for the device that we had the bluetooth device that we had so so that our users uh, a couple of them tested this uh, one of them was named sefi and the other was ohad so um, they could they 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 worked on cad designing and modeling you know 3d modeling or, or i think sefi worked on photoshop so they could actually control photoshop they could actually do their jobs using this and that is something that uh, it, it, i found really precious and it it uh, uh you know it's a, so the project uh, got a grant from a bunch of grants from some european entities uh the israel government recently announced a grant but i mean you know things are not so good there right now so it's it's sort of on hold but we hope to one day open source the uh like no, you know open source the development kit like build an sdk around this and allow people to build apps on top of this ecosystem so that people uh, people with like limited control of their limbs could achieve so much more one thing one thing around this i found very fascinating was i thought that i could create impact only by creating something that could control a wheelchair or or you know do something around mobility but i think mo- there are many mobility solutions around for for people with physical disabilities but there are uh, so but some self expression is something that is not very um, not not very stressed or stressed upon right so that is uh, that is something that i that i thought 
would not cause impact but it did because the face i saw on ohad's like the look i saw on ohad's face when he was able to play music uh using that device uh, you know so so i'll describe i i actually had a like a video deck uh, a presentation but but i later learned that this is audio only so anyway uh, the i'll describe ohad ca- cannot uh, use his hands uh, he he can only control one of his hands and that too very partially like it shakes a lot so he can't do day to day activities very easily uh, but he has good control over his tongue even like he has a little shaking in his head so he can't use eye tracking as well so you know being able to play guitar express himself was something that he valued so much that i did not even realize and and that that is pretty precious so you know that that is one of the projects that i worked on really cool and i hope that you know things take a better t- you know turn for the better uh, in in israel and you know i'm i'm able to do something cool again with them uh moving on to the next solution that i worked on uh, so so back in january late january 2020 i remember seeing uh, this covid thing seems pretty serious uh it was only in uh, so so it was only spreading like wildfire in china and italy at that point so we weren't really worried um, but, but it looked pretty pretty brutal right i saw a bunch of images of people not being able to get access to a ventilator doctors making the, you know very difficult choices uh, literally cemeteries filled up to the brim with uh, with with coffins so i i felt like the hospital administration system the medical administration system is going to be under a lot of pressure when this comes to india and the the point is it it is it was never about if it it's it was absolutely about when and uh, so so on 31st jan i think uh, we got our first case so i put out a call so the point is the question i got was what can i do right now i i had this sense of urgency that what can i do right now i'm just a coder i can't i'm not a doctor so so i can't f- literally physically save lives but but can i assist them to do it uh, better or you know can i can i build tools that that help them focus on things that matter and take care of the other trivial uh, things for them so i put out a call on all of my social media i, I think harish might have seen uh some of those that you know if you are working on anything related to covid please let me know i i would like to be a part of it and and that led me to pathcheck foundation which is uh, an mit media lab spin off so i have previously worked with the mit media lab so i i had a few um you know discussions with dr ramesh raskar who who was leading the pathcheck foundation thing so i started as a as an open source contributor there and they were building something that later became uh, the indian version of that same code base became arogya setu so i i was like an open source contributor to the to the original uh, repository but but i felt that it won't really be very effective in india because for for contact tracing apps to be effective for for those contact tracing apps to be effective you need 65% of the population uh, of the particular region to have the application installed and active the problem with that is uh, the only 50% of the people in india actually have smartphones like you know the point is so it may not be even 50% people but it's just that number of smartphones in india is about 600 million right now in in a population of 1.2 billion so even if we had literally all the smartphones in india uh loaded and installed uh, you know lo- loaded with these apps it it won't help us because it, it the number is simply not enough and the the disparity between urban and rural regions would would have been uh, too large again so so there there was a bunch of complex uh, complexities or complications that would arise so uh, we so so uh, an innovation circle that i have i i mentor startups at tcs uh, incubate uh, tcs incubation center in nashik so we got together on a call uh, the community the innovators we have there and we discussed what could we do could we take a top down approach instead of a bottom up approach like bottom up is you you have people install like you know you make consumers install an application and and that leads to some kind of impact but can we take a top down approach and go through the route of uh, you know directly being with the medical authorities instead 
so that's how the idea of uh, mahakavach came in so mahakavach is a uh, is it later became the official contact tracing application for the state government of maharashtra and uh, it is still active in a different form but i'll tell you the original journey so we said uh, contact tracing is a very essential activity in early infections and what what was happening was in in hospitals medical officers were visiting early cases of coronavirus uh, patients and they were asking them questions where all have you been in the past 15 days right and people had to recall and and human you know memory is really tricky you don't remember everything you can't remember everything if you are asked a specific question like um can uh, where were like w- when you went to the sabji mandi 12 days ago were you there for more than 15 minutes or not i mean that's a that's such a specific question nobody will be able to answer that very accurately so um, that that is why we we came up with mahakavach that could tap into your location tracking history you could donate like you could it was an opt in mechanism where uh, if you if you opted in you we could take like uh, we could give you instructions on how to use the google takeout mechanism that allows you to take out your google location tracking history and submit the zip file to us uh, it will locally open the zip file figure out uh, the only the past 15 days of your uh, location history and make it available locally to the uh, to the medical officer right and in 24 hours we would destroy the data to preserve privacy and security of the people but what this did was within uh, within 15 minutes you had this this list this chronological list of where this person has been and how long the person was there so it was surprisingly accurate uh, the impact was like the difference we made was uh the earlier process usually took 3 to 4 days per patient uh, once every day a medical officer visited and asked questions for about 15 minutes and then went back and then came back the other day so that was a long running process and in contact tracing you need to know as fast as possible so that you can deploy screening teams you can set up covid hospitals you could set up uh, uh, you know testing centers or you could predict where the future hotspots might come from right so so you need this information really really fast so you can't wait 3 to 4 days for that uh, so mahakavach the difference it made was it made it took this process that takes 3 to 4 days it put it in between like 15 to 20 minutes and the accuracy which was previously unknown because you don't know whether this person or li- is lying or is is he actually forgetting or is he actually perfectly uh, per- perfectly recalling everything right there's no way to know if this is 100% accurate or 40% accurate so with mahakavach we had a 93% accuracy because google provided us those numbers right and and the timeline in which we executed this is something that i find really special so we so the the day of conceptualization let's call it day 0 right the, when we thought that let's assist uh, medical authorities instead of instead of trying to ha- have everyone install an application let's only target the specific people who are affected so we conceptualized let's say on day 0 on day, by day 3 we had a prototype on uh, react native and we demonstrated it to the collector of nashik we got a go ahead for a pilot so on day 7 we went live and a funny thing between that happened that react native somehow um, you know if there are any coders here you would realize react native could be horribly unreliable at times so we had to build the application from scratch on android native again between that so it took us 4 days but we went live on um, on like on day 7 on day 14 we were declared the official application for maharashtra government we collaborated with the maharashtra state innovation society uh, to to execute this to take this pan maharashtra so and and by day 20 we were live in seven districts in maharashtra with about 83000 installs uh, and and by day 30 we had generated 5000 contact tracing reports for the state government uh, by august i think last year we had about uh, 28000 reports generated so so that was the journey of mahakavach and and the special thing was we this was all voluntary contributions uh, people just kept kept joining because we were on a mission we put out calls we put out social media calls uh, saying we are looking for volunteers and volunteers we did get we we had about uh, 80 odd contributors 
uh, in and out contributing to mahakoj in some sense uh, you know somebody volunteered for back end somebody did devops somebody uh, uh, somebody did the mobile application and and the team was you know pretty pretty active because we were tied to the mission so i just want to quickly say what went right so in the management right because we were all volunteers and we weren't under an organization there was no hierarchy as such there was no uh, manager or no boss there was no co-founder nothing right there was no hierarchy we were just people trying to help out so the flat hierarchy kept kept things very swift if there was a, a decision to be taken uh, about about let's say uh, how do we protect you know how do we encrypt the data that is on the device then then the engineer who owned up to the task would would take the take the call and like you know it it, it, it they, they wouldn't need to wait for any approvals or anything for for that so a flat hierarchy then second thing was a sense of ownership so by ownership i mean that if i if if out of 20 core core engineering group contributors i said i will take care of uh, let's say reporting breaches of uh, breaches of quarantine like let's say somebody leaves their house while they are supposed to be in in quarantine or they are covid positive and they leave their hospital there were some cases where people were running away so if that happens how do we implement this feature there would be a discussion on the zoom call but once somebody owns up to the task that i'll get this executed whatever resources were required that person was responsible to to make sure that the resources are there they pull in whatever whoever uh, they need and and get it done right so that's the, that's what i mean by ownership you own the task you own the implementation of it and you're responsible to make sure that it happens so so that sense of ownership kept things really swift fast and efficient people did it with a sense of purpose uh, there was a heartfelt connection to the problem and that is i mean it, it's it's really obvious it's it's covid and people want to help out uh, but but having that heartfelt connection i i saw that it makes a huge difference because people people work like they are they are you know possessed by a ghost i myself pulled uh, straight 60 hour work sessions twice during this uh, 3 hour, uh, 3 3 month spell so so when you have such dedicated team you you are bound to you know at least build a good engineered product uh, if if not cause a lot of impact and and the fourth very important point for for people who are building mvps prototypes you know and if you're working on a startup you might have read about the build measure learn loop from uh, the lean startup a book called the lean startup i'm pretty sure uh, most of you have at least heard of it or you know or finished it so we had a very very strong commitment to the build measure learn loop so we started small we did not try to make the best product out there on day one we said we are going to do it use case by use case we are going to solve niche problems first and then we are going to um, you know try to try to rapidly build whatever is required so we that is how we went live on day seven and we we kept on iterating really really fast and i think that is a model that wo- that has worked for me at least and i think it would it does scale quite well where you don't try to build uh, the best product on day one but you but but you have a team that can burst and and really execute smaller iterations very very fast right that is that is something that i noticed and i try to inculcate in whatever teams i am a part of the challenges that we faced uh, is you know building the support structure uh, having having enough volunteers because people were volunteering volunteering their time out of their day jobs right so we did not have a reliable way to say that this person will always be there um, no matter what or he's always there for nine hours or something so we had to have a healthy amount of like we had a healthy churn rate so we needed like inflow as well as like the outflow was anyway going to be there so we needed enough like channels to to have intake uh, volunteers really fast so building that support stru- support structure that's where the core team spent most of their time after the initial prototypes were out um and and another challenge was missing the serendipity of casual chit chat conversations I, I mean so to address that we we just uh, hosted a serendipity session or like a chai session where you had to have a chai cup on, in your hand or whatever like a mug and and not talk about work or like not your day job not mahakavach 
you just randomly hang out and go around so that's that's mahakavach and like right now what i am doing is uh, there's this need to have a centralized resource to track how much oxygen supply is available with the state government uh, which districts need how much uh, which hospital is about to run out or which hospital is about you know only has has only about 18 hours of supply left are there any surpluses in other districts so managing that flow of oxygen from a central uh, position in the state but also giving jurisdiction based access to district collectors divisional commissioners people like that uh, so that's the system we have deployed right now it's active in uh, the districts of parbhani vardha uh, bid etc and we are going live uh, pan maharashtra pretty soon so and and we do this for remdesivir tocilizumab oxygen and other critical resources like even oxygens and bed management as well so so that's where mahatavach is right now uh finally i would like just to talk about the kumbh mela thing because um where well, i mean just just like a really brief sum- summary so i was 14 and i got let's see i was 9 when my grandfather told me that he was a mathematician and like a thorough rationalist and like kind of a uh an atheist so he said uh, like he he said there is going to be this festival called kumbh mela in 2015 it happened in 2003 usually when it happens a bunch of people die so the way the way he said it was like um, it really pinches you saying that like saying that it's it's normal for people to die uh, in in an event right so so that hit me and it kept going at the back of my head but uh, it, and, and and when i was 14 i got a chance to present some of my ideas at this forum called like nashik innovation forum and uh, a few people were like attending who who later turned out to be the you know people leading this thing called kumbhathon so i so the question was on stage we had to present what will you do for the upcoming kumbh mela what are the challenges you think will be faced and what would be the solutions you would come up so i presented a bunch of like random ideas we could like there's going to be so many people they're going to do like footsteps like they they're going to walk so we should put like tiles that generate electricity blah 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 you know like really childish eighth grade ideas but but somehow the the um the people who attended liked them so i got invited to be a part of this thing called kumbhathon which was an innovation drive to empower nashik students to build uh, and solve challenges to build for kumbh mela and solve real world challenges there uh, and and then later on maybe even start uh, start a company or like you know start up after after that like take that solution commercial so the point is again the first question like you know during mahakavas as well i said I, i i got a sense what can i do right now so even even during the kumbh innovation efforts it was always about what can i do right now whatever is in my power Uh, I, i i try to do so i and the funny fact is i did not know how to code before i joined kumbhathon i learned how to code because i wanted to build the solution so if i had stuck to the label that i'm just an eighth grade kid who has built a bunch of whatever science gizmos or uh, assembled a few knockdown kits like you know those those learning kits that you get i i, I if i had restricted to that and and said that you know i'm just an eighth grade guy i don't know uh, i'm not i don't have a you know i don't have a background right that word is thrown around quite a lot and I, and it kind of bugs me i don't have a cs background i don't have a a management background i i don't think those backgrounds are di- like they don't dictate what you um, what you can do or how you can contribute it's uh, i think it's a lot to do with how much energy you have or how much dedication or devotion you have towards the problem if you are committed enough you'll figure out something uh, and contribute so so that's what happened with me and that's what happened with my teammates as well uh, we they they were also in their 20s and like they were engineering students sure but like they were doing electrical uh, electronics uh, engineering but it was not like it's very different like engineering syllabus is very different from what what happens in the real world right in 2014 iot wasn't a thing they figured out how to how to make it make it happen right so um well the question should always be what can i do right now and like can i can i quickly pick up some some other skill to to better contribute um 
so what we ended up doing was so uh, obviously that thing around crowd like crowd management was uh, at the back of my head and when when the challenge was so uh, when the challenge was presented at the first hackathon at, at in uh, during the kumbhathon efforts uh, they, like there were a bunch of challenges right my my city nashik has 16 lakh people urban population 16 to 18 lakh people and we we host 3 crore people once every 12 years for the kumbh that's a massive amount that's 20 times what we have uh, in in regular times the city isn't big enough uh, you know physically it's not large enough to host so many people sustainably but but we so this is what uh, what people called a pop up city uh, a city that blows up in resources as well as population uh, all of a sudden due to a, a planned or an unplanned event so when that happens right you have a lot of problems around logistics and food and sanitation transportation crowd management there are a bunch of there are a bunch of challenges that you could solve but the crowd management thing was i was really taken by that challenge so that's why we we started brainstorming and uh, we came up with this idea called ashioto which means footstep in japanese and uh, so, so what it did was this, there was this mat that counted the number of footfall okay not people but footfall and the assumption was that like we designed it such in such a way that it won't count uh, if a person stepped twice on it like in the sense like not uniquely identifying but people are going people are going to be moving around in the kum there is only unidirectional flow which means people can't go back from where they came so uh, we 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 knew that a person would go from point a to b and only from a point a to b and it, like there there won't be a reverse flow and we designed it like only to span 18 inches in in width so that most of the people would step only once on it and if they do it twice the the chances like the the error rate would be low enough that it won't make a statistical difference it won't be significant statistically uh, the purpose of counting was uh if we spread out enough number of sensors around the city and we gather that data in a central dashboard and like plot some kind of a heat map uh the assumption was that police would be able to stop crowds at the right time let's say you know point a b c d e f if if there there are a lot of people at point d like right bef- like between c and d we knew how much the area between point c and d was like there were gates that were planned there were sp- specific streets allocated uh, for for these so we knew the area and we knew the distance so we could calculate the popul- like the crowd density in that particular region right so if the crowd density moved beyond a certain point if the outflow of that region moved beyond a certain point police could say that do not let more people in to this region or uh, or you know plan an emergency evacuation through backup routes that they had planned so that uh, less people get uh, crowd uh, you know less people enter or like at least less people enter or more people exit this uh, region pretty quickly right that that was that is how we aimed to uh, you know prevent stampedes and i have to say it like worked quite well we deployed in uh, all the three shahi snans and shahi snans are like these big events during like they are their special days and or, we were needed only then otherwise there's not like a real real big chance of stampedes oh yeah stampedes so this threat might not seem very real but in kumbh kumbh mela uh, in 2003 in nashik 39 people had lo- lost their lives uh, during kumbh right so so the problem was very very important and like it it sort of tarnished the image of the city that was also like a, a a real bad feeling so that is why we wanted to solve for it so we deployed during all the three shahi snans and it uh, well I, i guess it pretty went went pretty well uh, so what went right with this is we were persistent it took us about one and a half years to to actually deploy we started in jan 2014 i i was an 8 14 year old like i was 13 almost 14 kind of a guy and i like we kept on persisting i skipped a lot of school whatever right but uh, i was so taken by this this solution that i i wanted to build it no matter what so there was and we kept persisting we we uh, kept building different prototypes there so the solution that i told you is probably the sixth or seventh solution that came to our head 
we had failed many times with rfid with mobile tower data pings uh, with cctv like computer vision cameras there were many complications with those things and so so we decided to keep it simple uh, so so that brings me to my next point simple and effective technology is is better than cutting edge and futuristic technology we did not have any buzzwords like we did not know it was like buzzword worthy which is iot we did not know it was an iot device but we kept it simple the sensor itself was nothing fancy it was it was an actuator switch okay nothing else but uh, we designed it like the the core part was like the design of the mat rather than uh, having some kind of a fancy uh, load balancing cell or like uh, you know load cell or uh, not load balancing load cell or or some kind of an ai camera there was nothing futuristic about it but it was effective right it worked it worked reliably it worked in the rain it was portable and any volunteer uh, could be trained to set it up within 5 minutes so so that that is what led to actual impact the solution was simple enough that it was deployable uh, often times people come up with a lot of complicated but really nice solutions that would perfectly solve a problem but that perfect solution isn't practically um, you know viably deployable in the real world so uh, that is something i keep in mind uh, there's like you know a bunch of other thoughts but i, I think we are kind of uh, short on time I, we won't have enough uh, time for q and a uh, a few I, i'll just wrap up with a few points the challenges we faced during this were analysis paralysis which is like we thought a lot like we early early in in early iterations i won't say that i understood the build measure learn loop at that point so we sat down as a team in the hackathons and we used to talk a lot could we do this could we do that and then we started analyzing those the point is sitting in that room never gave us insights uh and and like we realized that after our mentors hammered us like uh, you know our mentors really came down on us saying that you sit here and do nothing go out, go out in the field and put a bunch of dirty prototypes out there see which ones work which ones don't come up with a hybrid solutions and like to uh, borrow parts that worked in certain solutions throw away the parts that did not work and get it running okay it doesn't matter how much analysis you do it doesn't matter how many white papers you show us right so so that like that kick uh, got us got us working and that is something uh, i think uh, i i i would encourage everybody to 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 keep in mind and uh, well getting approval as a young team is always a challenge it's like i was a 14 year old kid the district commissioner was not willing to listen to a kid telling him how to manage crowds in the kum uh, but but i mean you know the proof was in the paper when you show when you demonstrate that this is something that they could use uh, people are more willing to accept and people are more willing to um, you know entertain you so yeah uh, three in the end i would just say there are three guiding principles that that i have followed like this is this is not something that i consciously have done but this is something that i have observed from the journey i have had so far the first point is actively hunt for ways to contribute there are there is so much work out there there are so many challenges out there there is so much you could do there is always something you can do okay it doesn't matter if you can not develop hardware you can not write code it is always something you could learn and and do uh, that that would lead to something some impact it might not be social impact it might be commercial impact whatever it is right? there is always things you could do but but the opportunities won't come to you they you have to actively hunt for ways to contribute and then choose uh, which one uh, which opportunity actually excites you enough that you will sustainably work on it uh, the second thing is labels don't matter i think we have discussed this third thing is like you know this comes uh, uh, comes after a a point like you know 4 5 years after working i think uh, that that you sort of have this devotional or like a a, a devotional relationship towards your work it's uh, you know the 3 am coding sessions those are the most beautiful points uh, in my work it is not like talks it's not speeches or or it's not um, you know being awarded somewhere it's it's the, the or not even not even i would say it's not even deployments i'm sorry to say but it's it's that beauty of uh, sitting with the team or sitting alone and crafting something beautiful something elegant right uh, that 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 keeps me going and uh, i i think it's that this is what will sustain me as a technologist rather than being uh, super excited about certain 
certain problems i think that motivation that initial kick only takes you half way through the other thing has to be that you enjoy absolutely enjoy what you do right if if the if the day to day activity that you do in 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 the process of innovation if it's not enjoyable to you it 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 like you might not be able to sustain the efforts uh, a lot like you would slack off eventually so yeah that's that's pretty much it thank you so much for relating to some of my ramblings and i am more than happy to take uh, all of your questions hey nile uh, thanks a lot for this great talk you know uh, every solution that you spoke about was solving a real problem this could be you know for the differently able could be for covid or could be for something like the kumbha mela and something that i would take away is when you said backgrounds don't dictate what you'll be doing uh which means that you know even if you just throw a problem you you said you learned to code when you were you know given a problem and then you eventually started uh learning to code which is pretty fascinating uh i've seen a lot of people say that hey um i'm from electronics background maybe i can't code or uh, i can't do this because my deploy something called canisters which are backends they aim to achieve this at internet internet speed and internet scale and the good thing about motoko is once you write that backend it generates a, a an npm package for you that can interface with the canister which is the backend it can figure out you don't need to put any uh, i uh, you know you, you don't need to write your own axios uh, or fetch methods or anything it just directly gets you uh, the the package in your node js environment it could be react react native react native we haven't tried yet but sure uh, in any javascript and any npm node environment uh, could could use a, a canister canister is what their backend is so that's that's pretty exciting blockchain can unlock opportunities that were like previously just impossible to to build uh, with the centralized or web 2.0 uh, internet so that 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 prospect is incredibly exciting to me awesome then get 70% of it but sounds really exciting yeah i'm happy to hang out for like a crypto specific thing yeah i think we should definitely have that Yeah. Okay. Uh, someone's asking, what advice would you give to a fourteen-year-old who wants to become like you and wants to change the world? Wow. Okay. Um. Hmm. See. Uh. I I would say just try to pick one skill that that you really really like and and try to build something real with it. Okay. Don't don't build a to-do app. Okay. There's bunch of to-do apps. <laughs> you can always copy paste. You can always you know git clone something and say that you have built this. But um, I would say. if it's hardware that that excites you the most pick out something see i i would say start with a skill that actually excites you okay the thing i thing is i did learn how to code to make the project possible but i also stuck with it it's been 7 years since i've been coding so so clearly i enjoy the activity itself i did try my hand at hardware but it did not work that way like i it did, did not excite me that much so pick something like try a bunch of things and then pick something that you really enjoy doing on a day to day basis okay and then build something real with it any 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 skill that you are trying to pick up build something real go live that is that is the most important thing it could be like a really simple thing a, a, a very simple problem uh, it could be like a library management tool for your for your school i, I know a guy called samarth raju who for his first project called uh, you know build this thing called uh, gift a book okay it's a simple website that allows you to gift people books that's it okay it's it's a it's technically technologically very very simple but it went live okay and and that that got him started in his tech career he raised a grant from emergent ventures and 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 he's doing pretty cool uh, cool tech projects after that so he joined a bunch of communities so i would say join join good communities i think with clinify you're in a good company but try to find collaborators it's not just to listen it's not just to uh, read a bunch of cool stuff but actually collaborate with people even if you know basics that's okay right uh, nobody nobody was born uh, knowing knowing anything about any technology we always are picking up things so so try to collaborate with people who could who who are also energetic energy and like enthusiasm towards the towards the problem matters more than more than what you uh, what current skills you have skills are learnable right so yeah so I, i would say pick a skill and and build out from there build something real put it out there get some feedback you will find someone uh, with whom you can collaborate 
long term maybe build a startup if you'd like that or at least you'll build a portfolio good enough to uh, get hired by a cool startup yeah i think collaboration was something really important uh, even in your case right because uh, during the kumbhathan project you guys actually took it forward with ashioto and uh, yeah you just formed like a team and that was kind of important in your journey yeah yeah it, it was just being like, around with like, smart people helps in a way ab- absolutely you know try to get get access to communities that would help you you know put out your voice to to people who have done some really cool stuff so that that energizes you and it it's a, it's quite a good component to have in as a as a part of your journey mm-hmm. right? you can't do everything alone okay nobody there's exactly, the, yeah. the myth of elon is like don't don't follow him okay like he's a he's a he's a smart guy but the point is uh, too much credit is go- given to that individual spacex and tesla have some incredible engineers okay it's it's not a bunch of even the founders were different wasn't alone yeah, yeah. jb strobel right uh, look up redwood redwood materials they are they are trying to develop uh, uh, biodegradable batteries for evs okay some some cutting edge technology that is that it's absolutely wonderful so so uh, it's always a team that achieves things okay it's not like don't don't fall into the romanticism of of the single founder the steve jobs the the jeff bezos it's a myth okay it's a lot of pr and it, at some point you might be in a position that that uh, using your name for pr is good but it's just pr understand pr versus actual uh, technology building yeah like when you read lon musk's biography you actually get to know that a lot of he, i mean he just had majority stake and he sort of overtook later on right great executioner exactly. but not wasn't the original idea yeah i mean he is a smart engineer no 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 doubt about it The, it's just that it's not just him yeah. right yeah and i think yeah pr has a major role to play there because they have to blame one person right sure sure so i mean yeah it's it's a strategic decision but don't base your engineering journey or your career mm-hmm. around it like it's not it's you're chasing chasing rainbows fair enough yeah uh, so chelle is asking uh, what's that one future technology you're betting on that every engineer or non engineer should be learning decentralized blockchain like it might not be blockchain but distributed le- ledger is the future and how do you recommend them to go about learning it uh okay i i, I just want to drop this really cool uh, website sure, called sure. crypto zombies okay crypto zombies.io it's a website that teaches you how to write uh, blockchain code uh, solid like so on blockchain right it's called uh, they're called uh, smart contracts blockchain deployed code on ethereum is called smart contracts and the language to use in it is solidity the most popular language is solidity so to learn solidity crypto zombies takes you through like building a uh, b- building a fun game around zombies like like sort of like plants versus zombies and while doing it it's like an interactive tutorial and it teaches you how to write a solidity smart contract so that's i think a good uh, good first thing uh, if you're good at like normal programming picking up picking up uh, decentralized is not very difficult there are some things that you need to unlearn uh, because the model is very different but uh, once you get your foot in the door right explore a few different technologies such as icp or or the cardano blockchain see which ones you think can solve a good problem and and try to build for that problem and there's like you know i'll tell you the blockchain thing is right now uh, i feel i compare it to the early days of the internet some of my mentors at internet society have also like said that when we were uh, when when they were looking at the emergence of internet right this is the feeling that they had there there's so much scope the communities are pretty tight knit they are they're small like with icp as well there's like it became the eighth largest cryptocurrency in the world within a week of its launch okay at a 45 billion dollar market cap but their actual blockchain decentralized application discord only has let me check like a few you know dozen people okay 83 people 83 people that's it right and so it's a tight knit community and it's very energetic so every friday they like yesterday i was on a on a meet and like um, uh the the definity foundation that authored the protocol uh, a few of the developers hang out there uh, so i'm telling you guys these are these are like potential future um, you know zuckerbergs and what not sitting there uh, hanging out with you like building building stuff with you uh, and and seeing like whether you could contribute something you know a small part so a french guy named seb started this thing for uh, motoko 
to to learn icp protocol and he himself is learning like it, it it's his first experience with tech so he is not bound by what is is uh, what his current skill set is right he is just goofing around and like trying to build something cool so get a get you know be a part of some of those early communities you might stumble onto something like something of a gold mine super interesting yeah i think it's like the first move advantage you get when you join in now yeah like like in the dot com bubble right the point is a lot of companies did shut down after the dot com bubble crash but during it 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 like a a huge uh, the number of businesses were actually uh, re-energized because of technology because technology like internet made possible something that was previously not possible right sell an individual seller or an individual artist being able to sell on something like gumroad right that unheard of right ebay amazon these are technologies like the, these are the businesses that could be built uh, because of the internet that was previously uh, not possible similarly with blockchain there are opportunities that haven't been built yet that uh, that can lead like you know that that were previously not buildable for example social networks right now if you post on facebook or instagram it's an instagram post it's a facebook post which means if facebook goes away your post goes away if you don't like the feed algorithm for facebook you you're still stuck there it's facebook okay it they control they dictate what the feed is they dictate how it's assembled they dictate how political or unpolitical it gets right but imagine on blockchain there is a standard standard format or a standard protocol to store data so harish's social media posts exist independent of any social network on the blockchain so immutable nobody can tamper with it it is it's encrypted but when harish logs into a web 3.0 or a da- like a dap a social network he gives it read permissions it can render its own feed it can allow harish to create more content out there and uh, let's say tomorrow they uh, the user base thinks that uh, somebody else has a better interface somebody else has invented a good interface or, a, or you know they have a better uh, unbiased algorithm or or like it's a purpose driven social network people shift there very fluidly you can take your data like you know you you could fluidly move between move across social networks they the social networks won't need to hog on their da- hog on your data and and have you tied down to the ecosystem and this is something that's not possible to be built on 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 uh, web 2.0 but web 3.0 opens those possibilities right do you think uh fight 10 years down the line there'll be an alternative decentralized social media that will just take over facebook I, instagram I, I, I think in a few years you 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 won't have uh, like i think what happened with orkut is what will happen with facebook if they don't go decentralized Wow. Web point, like web 2.0 i i don't think it will it is going to exist uh, like you know web 2.0 social ne- social media at least i don't think it makes sense like it's like uh, using landlines after phones are there okay so so that's you know that that's my take on it landlines nobody like they're still around but nobody really uses them well wow. that's that's a bold one let's let's see how how it pans out yeah um okay and are you are you working on uh, some sort of decentralized social media thing i i am attempting to thoda bahut uh, i am i am trying to build a team see again doing it alone is not possible and i like you know this is something that is such a such a new thing it is it is a long shot okay so it's some sort of a moonshot project to to author these standards for the for the for the decentralized world uh, because because like you you tra- like flipping the entire traditional social networking model so how do you create value out of it right there has to be some kind of tokenomics involved there has to be some kind of value exchange system set up there like you, you know it's a whole ecosystem so doing it alone is like absolutely out of question so i'm trying to find people who are energetic and like you know who, who are just just a form a community that is interested in building something on the decentralized web uh, in in the social network space so that's why i hang out on the definity like you know the icp stuff a few people have shown interest that you know we we could start small we could we could like author a standard that uh, standard for uh, definity uh, like you know icp where it, it just describes what the text is right it could spawn so like the 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 i'll give you an example let's say today we have medium for blogs right uh or or like you know freelance authors they could mint their articles as as nft uh, float it on the blockchain on their own and like when the when the sale happens like when when somebody 
says i want to acquire this content right the ownership gets transferred and thus on that social network or on that uh, blogging website the website like uh, the the article starts rendering right so something like that is is like it's it's vast but it still fits into the general idea of what i described so it's it's so big that uh, building it is going to be a mammoth task so i'm just trying to find like a little thing that i could build with some people and and get it running interesting and a uh, fun fact a few minutes back the co-founder and cto of discord was listening to this talk wow. he left after a while yeah okay wow that's that is really cool i think uh, I think I bored him eventually. <laughs> nah, nah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that's interesting. Yeah. Um. Okay. Let's. I'm just looking for more questions. Oh, I think there are a lot of eleventh graders. Advice for eleventh graders who's been stuck between stuck uh, stuck in the pandemic and JE prep. JE prep. Yeah. How can I boost my extracurriculars online? I mean, so it depends on what, why you want to boost them, right? If you want to do them for college admissions, then um, I don't really know because I'm not great with that. I am, I'm an open university guy. Okay, I'm, I'm the wrong guy to take advice for GE. You can ask Harish for that uh, because I did not appear for GE. So um, I, I did not like the point is for me at least it felt like a lot of noise. so i i just did not so a few days ago i made like kind of a bold statement to her is that uh, formal education should not interfere with like sorry what what did i say college shouldn't interfere with my formal education yeah so, <laughs> yeah so i mean i i see the va- value in engaging com- engaging with communities like these uh, and like you know building a network outside of the college ecosystem for me college is just a we to it's like a subscription service to a community okay so uh, it's it's a premium community i understand bits is a really nice community to be to be a part of iit is a nice one stanford and harvard again like the value is not the content the content is available for free uh, i still follow uh, some of the mit open course where lectures so i have access to the like the best professors and everybody has access to the best professors in the world right now the point is to 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 build a good community uh that that can give you access to people to collaborate with right people to build things with so it depends on what your purpose is it's like a really really subjective question man 100 percent i second your thoughts there like even at bits the content that teachers teach it's it's there on youtube we can just google it up exactly. uh, but then ultimately it's about the alumni network that everyone uh, goes for same applies for iit same for Ah, uh, maybe Stanford. Unless there's like something, some hardcore research facility. Like if you want to work on quantum computation, sure, you need to be yeah. a university. So that depends. Ah, uh, it it really depends on what you want to achieve. Really. Correct. Uh, yeah. But uh, I mean, being sandwich, I I just said like it's it's common general time management discipline things. I realize that like being slightly more disciplined helped me boost my productivity like you know fifty times. Yeah. And I think this is applicable to any type of learning, right? Information is just available. Like there's just oversaturation of information out there on the internet. But then it's ultimately the right community and the right people you hang around with. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, looking for more questions. Do you know Pixel? Have you heard of Pixel? Pixel, the phone? Ah, uh, no, the the startup, the space startup. No, not really. Okay, the building or uh, satellites. Okay. Launching. Oh, are they the ones that got a couple uh, satellites launched recently? They would be launching soon. Like something like that. They got an approval for that, right? Yeah, they got an approval from. Ah, uh, yeah. The P double X. Pixel, yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. I have kind of like uh, I think uh, some some uh, some tech blog covered them. So. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. Really cool stuff. It's yeah, a, it's a, it's young, young bunch of folks, twenty-two years old. Oh, twenty-two years old. Raised oh like seven million dollars from Lightspeed. God uh, damn. Okay. I met them during a uh, Bits Sky Summit. Okay. Uh, they, they're from Bellani. He kind of dropped out also from Bits. Okay. Yeah. Well, interesting. I mean, it's a tremendous, like tremendously exciting time to be alive. Yeah. True. Right. Uh, the thing is, okay, uh, slightly off topic, but uh, the way these guys proved themselves was even before they made the satellites, they went out to potential clients 
and they were like, if we give you data that's more accurate, uh, mm-hmm. would you like buy from us? And got like a contract mm-hmm. signed. And once they had all of these million dollar contracts signed, they went to investors and they were like, hey, this is a tech team that we have. These are the potential contracts that we have access to. Let's do it. So that, that was the way they convinced investors. That's who invested in like me to you. I, I, I should learn how to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing um, stuff. I really like this. This has given me a lot to think about. You should, yeah. You should definitely, you know, um, so like a, a lean startup on at scale, right? Like yes. what Zappos did, but for satellites. True. That's amazing. Is it crypto getting banned in India? Crypto. Oh my God. So yeah. I mean, the point is, Supreme Court has like sorry, the RBI has told banks to sort of cut ties with them. I, so today I talked about blockchain and not crypto, uh, but sure, I mean, I, I invest in crypto from time to time. And um, the thing is, Indian, like, legality-wise, crypto is legal in India. It's like, it's not criminal or like, it's not illegal in any sense to hold crypto. Uh, but banks do not like it. RBI doesn't like it because it takes money out of fiat currency ecosystem and transfers it to crypto, right? If the value is not being stored in fiat currency and it shifts, like it, it has more to do with economies than anything else. They don't want the money to flow out of their system. So if you see platforms like Wazirx, they uh, they are not able to support deposits right now, but withdrawals are allowed because they are happy to have uh, people withdraw, like, you know, enter, like, they're happy to have money enter the ecosystem rather than exit the the fiat currency ecosystem so it's just the banks that are being being uh, sort of um, you know annoying about it interesting i had this question um so right now transferring money out of india is a really big hassle right uh, you have to go through a lot of regulations banks have yeah yeah uh, outward remittances is a bunch of yeah forms. so if uh, you know if, if you know rbi just says crypto is allowed then will that mean that a lot of these rich people will just take out their money using uh, cryptos? Yeah, that is pretty possible because the point is crypto is not tied. Like the point is fiat currency is tied to a currency. Crypto is not tied to a like you know fiat currency is tied tied to a country, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, crypto is not. So uh, when I convert my INR into USD tether. I can move it anywhere. I can send it to Binance, which is a US based exchange. I can send it to Kraken, which is like part Europe, part US. I could store it in a wallet. I could store it in a physical wallet, uh, like a, you know, a software wallet or a physical wallet. It doesn't matter. So it's so fluid. Uh, one of my mentors compared it to the Havala system. Okay. Look up Havala. It's basically peer to peer transactions. Uh, so, so cryptocurrency is Havala at scale, like at, at a universal scale. Uh, so it's the you know money being in a country might not actually be a concept with crypto. That's just interesting. interesting. So since it's so like it can just float around, yeah. do you think the amount of corruption would increase further in case you know uh, it, crypto is left free flowing? Uh, it is possible. The point with crypto is that although it uh, offers some kind of uh, anonymity with Bitcoin you like the transactions are always on the blockchain so they're immutable it's always provable and mm. it, you can't dispute the fact that a particular transaction happened okay you can't dispute the amount you can't dispute the time and you can't dispute the account IDs. okay so so that is a that is um it, it like allows you from for like semi trackable trackability like uh, if you see digital you want uh, uh, it's, it's a digital currency uh, launched by China, that is programmable currency. Okay, so it can only spend. Like if you if you get a grant from the government for farming equipment, you can only spend on farming equipment through it. Otherwise, transactions transactions won't go through, right? So doing something like that might give countries a little bit more control over corruption, and in fact, it might curb corruption quite a lot. But there are currencies like Monero that are like that are incredibly committed like extremely committed to the idea of privacy so they won't disclose even the account ids that were used in a transaction they won't disclose the amount that was transacted because i have myself uh, transacted on the monero chain it is really not possible you can't like on bitcoin you can see who are the whales whales are like big accounts that have a lot of cryptocurrency 
like let's say 20% of the supply of a particular crypto token right and so if a whale makes a makes a uh, makes a move uh, then the market either goes up or down like it's a huge uh, impact so on monero you don't even know if there are whales and like how many whales there are and how much supply they own because it's absolutely anonymous so corruption might be i mean it's you know the debate is about let's say what the you know the case with apple right uh, they they had this San Bernardino shooter's phone. The police, the FBI had a, had the phone, and Apple said we are still not going to break that security just because you want like you you won't be it won't be just this one time. Okay, once mm-hmm. we invent that technology, it's it's always going to be misused. So we are not like we stand by the privacy. So that is something that will uh, I I don't know. See, the ecosystem is pretty young right now. It will take a lot of time to mature, and uh, I think we will come up with some solutions around it. Correct. Yeah. Is um, like we will achieve an equilibrium. Hmm. Hmm. True. Yeah. True. Ali, to tell. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another question is um, someone's from management background and is asking how do I get involved in socially impactful things even though I'm a management student? Is so, that a value? Not really. I mean, as long as you can contribute in some sense, and obviously management is always needed, right? Uh, doesn't matter what your specialization is like. Uh, so, uh, for some of the projects I've done, my current uh, startup, Macondo, I have like our design intern is actually a product designer, and he did not know how to do UX design, uh, but but he picked it up. Right? He he was like really enthusiastic about it, and like re- really. Uh, it takes a lot of initiative. So, so his his specialization did not matter. And similarly for management as well, your specialization won't matter that much. Uh, but what will matter is, you know, I'll tell you, solution developers aren't technologists. Solution developers could be anyone who can observe a problem and try to figure out what's the most optimum way of solving it. So you don't need to be able to code. But you need to sort of understand what what sort of a solution would would be uh, good here. Like you you should have the ability to say that an application like a mobile application would be a good way to uh, distribute vaccines, for example. It's a really really bad example, but I'm just saying uh, solutions solution developers or or you know product. I know it's partially a myth, but they tend to be uh, sort of introverted at times. So management people, are like you know, I, I at least the, the image I have is they are more outgoing. So gathering a team, driving an initiative, that is something that you can always contribute to. Uh, in 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 a social like, and the thing is, social impact problems are not very drastically different from your regular commercial startups, right? So so you can always. Uh, it's, it's it's just like a regular startup that's more focused on reaching grassroots levels instead of trying to sell to the top one percent like cred right and like i mean that's that's also a good way to make money but uh the, the thing with uh, social impact startups is they they go to the farmer first rather than going to the fpo or like a large uh, monsanto or something that that's that's slightly a different model but uh, the initiative still remains the same you still have to go to the field you still have to convince your stakeholders you still have to do design thinking. You still have to plan the product. So that has nothing to do with being able to build technology. And with your management skill set, sure, you could you could assemble people and you could manage them better. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, I think it's just like you know complementary skills, right? Uh, you, yeah. It's yeah. the hipster, hustler, hacker roles. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. You always need all kinds of people. Correct. Uh, and also, uh, are you looking for people to work on Macondo as well? Your side project. Yeah, Macondo. Um, yeah, I think I, I'm. I'm. I'd be happy to uh, have a React Native person. I ca- You know, we really are bootstrapped. I can't pay much. It's not going no, to be uh, like if if you guys want to work. Like even the sheer joy of working with a smart person is insane. So uh, I, even even in our uh, community, a lot of people just don't care about money. They just want to work on something really cool and have an impact. So if anyone wants to, you know, sort of work with Nile firsthand, then do text him. Uh, you know, you guys can yeah. pretty much build something really cool. We're actively looking for React Native people. Uh, yeah. Even if you are building on Node.js, like backend, that that's still good enough. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. 
and everyone everyone's in college so you know people rarely care about money so sure, but i mean i i do understand that but i'll tell you i did not care about money for a really long time and i think i i, sh- I should have uh, okay so I, i it's just that like at least a basic token amount must be paid True, i'm not like I'm a, i'm a strong advocate against free internships although it's not a it's not a lot but like it shows that you value their efforts you value their time and time is not like your time is not worth less because because you don't have like 6 years of experience that's not the case everybody gets the exact same 24 hours so it should be rewarded yep yeah cool so it's like um, you know i mean even if like like a lot of people just debate between uh, debate it's like joining a high growth startup like versus joining a high growth startup versus okay why is it echoing why is it echoing um Yeah, it's like debating between yeah, joining like a high growth startup that pays less versus joining an established corporation like Amazon. It's totally your call. Right, right. Cool. Uh, Rana. Uh, okay, Viraj. When is the next event starting? It's at twelve thirty. I guess we can end it in the next five minutes. Okay. Uh, let's answer one final question. Uh, it's more of like on the high growth side of India. Uh, looking at the way technology is growing. Uh, compared to a few Western countries where growth might have sort of stagnated because they've already achieved quite a lot of development. Uh, Ronak is asking, do you think being born in India during the 2000s would be touted as being better than in California during the 1980s? I don't think so, because you know the point is even even in 1980s in california right california being a super liberal state it almost became like it's you know the thing is for like capital like bay area that it almost became a libertarian state right so libertarian is like uh, they 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 believe in private wealth but they are liberal in their uh, social outlook right so that gives you more freedom to build absolutely like elon musk is a famous liberate guy so um california had that sort of ecosystem it was very it was a very fertile ground uh, india on the other hand you know i think we have been saddled by this uh, notion that we are an it services country so even if we have a lot of developers in india like i think the largest it workforce in the world it it's a lot of people who can build modules and sub modules and like execute projects for tcs and not you know tcs ng hcl uh, those are the those are still the largest hiring uh, people so uh, being born in the 2000s is is very very different from being born in uh, california in 1980s uh, I, i don't know if i would objectively call it better or not it's it's about you know i think even right now getting access to resources in india is a, is an incredibly uphill uh, climb so um, you know i i don't think so it, it, it's it's we have a, we have a, we have a long way to go before that happens true i think uh, balaji shrinivasan talks about this he says that even till date uh, india's superpower is its human capital right uh, yeah. you know if software engineers in the in silicon valley cost $15000 a month uh, the same work can be done in india for like say $5000 a month and yeah. that disproportionate amount of uh, you know uh, it's wage it's gap arbitrage, is right it's arbitrage nothing exactly like. yeah that's what still differentiates india and other countries you know like bangladesh and uh, nepal yeah. see we are we are driven by a scarcity mindset there are too many people to go around so the environment becomes very competitive and toxic in some sense in mm-hmm. europe you are like you are pretty secure with your job at spotify right there are not many developers to go around and you're not like constantly under the fear that you might be laid off because there are a thousand other engineers who can take your job and even even do it for cheaper right so so that scarcity leads to i think it curbs innovation more than anything else people if if you don't have the peace of mind uh to to don't like you know whatever you are you are curious about uh, if you don't have that that sense of security it curbs innovation so uh, unless we build that in india i i don't think uh, we are anywhere close to being uh, in california so Correct. yeah okay, a lot of people are asking for my linkedin profile so i mean i'm really yeah, easy to reach uh, but i i let just drop the link uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah Okay cool 1 gig 0 yeah
Cool, cool. cool. Yeah, um, really I nice. guess let's wrap it up. Yeah. It was really, really nice. I I love this community. Very energetic. Uh, awesome, man. And yeah, thanks a lot for coming. A uh, lot of people are saying these are like one of the. This is like one of the very few events where I paid hundred percent attention. Uh, wow. So kept people going and even the retention has been awesome so thanks well, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. over over all of that uh, thanks a lot for coming in uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know has been a great session and yeah hopefully we'll be hosting you again sometime in the future for sure yeah always man always a pleasure to chat with you yeah cool awesome bye bye thank you Take so much care. everyone and Happy as the let's said he's working on a bunch of projects so if you want to be part of his founding team just text him he'll be happy yeah. to have a chat yeah. and take yeah. it forward for sure for sure yeah have have fun at the mun Thank you so much. Thanks yeah, man. Bye-bye. Take care. Thanks thanks for coming Nilay. Thanks for hosting Amarish. Yeah.